Hi, this is Peter Stanley. Welcome to my channel. Uh, today I want to do an unboxing and uh, show you some grow lights that the uh, Sansi Corporation sent me. Shipped via Amazon. They sent it to me uh, directly. So let's go ahead and... Um, it's probably a box within a box. So they, they sent me, they, they've got a new version of their grow light. So they sent me the uh, old, one of their old version and one of their newer one, of their new new version. So the older one, which probably the smaller one, is a 15 watt light. It's like a little, um, kind of a spotlight. It's got a screw in, it gets screwed into a regular uh, light socket. And the other is uh, very similar, uh, but is a 30 watt. So this is probably this larger box here. So this is the older one. It's a 15 watt LED grow light. And the other is um, yeah, 30 watt. Let's go ahead and open the smaller one first here. It. So it just screws into like a normal light socket. The uh, actual LEDs are a, a ring. I saw a video by um, Jeb Gardner did a review of two of these side by side. I think he grew like a crack key versus a DWC but two basil plants. And I was pretty impressed with just how these did, the 15 watt. And these are like, what they advertise is the actual two. That's another thing I like about theirs. Like if I plug this up, which I'm going to do, but I'm going to plug this up in the kilowatt, it'll actually show this pulling 15 watts. Same with the other. But I'm going to, I'm going to test them to, but uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and, uh, so that's the 15 watt. Looks pretty cool. Let's open the 30 watt one. This is their brand new model they just came out with. That's pretty cool looking. Same little screw in adapter. Um, so this has like, uh, what, five little sets of LEDs. I believe these are the like, full spectrum that aren't like, um, I don't know the color temp is. If I find it, I'll, I'll mention it or post it. But um, they're not like the red and blue, pink looking lights or like the, or the normal looking white light. So let's compare the other. There's a size difference. It's pretty significant. All right, looks pretty neat. So um, I'm going to go ahead and um, do some tests. I'm going to plug these up in the kilowatt, see what much power they're using, and also um, get some power readings on these. And then I'll show you how I'm going to set these up for a grow test. So I'm going to start out with the 15 watt. Yeah, looking closer at these and get some light on it. Um, those look like little cob lights in here, a little chip on board, LEDs. They're real efficient. And the other kind of looks like it, uh, but they're kind of obfuscated with a more opaque lens, but that's what these look like. What I'm going to do is install these in this, um, this fixture here. There won't be any issues with heat. I may need to take this off, but I think it'll be okay. There's a little bit of a gap. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug this in the kilowatt. Let's 
see. So the 15 watt light is pulling 15.3 watts and 0.12 amps, 0.13. Looks really good. Let me get a. Yeah, you can see that kind of a directional light. It's got a pretty defined um, uh, spread here. All right, so let's go ahead and let me get a get my par meter. We'll go and get a measurement while I've got that hooked up. Put this about as middle as I can. So 12 inches. It's Around 240, goes to 260 over here. Looks like the hot, hottest point's about 265, almost 270. So if we go up about half that distance. Around close to a thousand PPFD, give or take. That's pretty decent. All right, so let's go ahead and um, let me get the 30 watt setup and we'll check it out. Okay, I've decided not to use the um, the reflectors because it actually isn't giving any um, benefit because the light's going. There's nothing reflecting because the light's coming out past that, and it's it may be a heat issue. So I was going to and this is a little under the <clears throat> 15 watt pulled right at 15. This 30 watt is actually pulling 23.7. So it's a little bit of a disappointment. I was thinking that would, based on the 15, this would be actually 30, but it's a little under. Uh, 0.2 amps. So yeah, so it's getting 23.7 watts. Looks like the spread's more diffuse too, probably because of the lenses that are over the lights and the way they're set up. Can... It's kind of hard to adjust that, but. Okay, so let's go ahead and do some par readings. So it looks like um, at 12 inches, this really isn't any more than the 15. It may be a bigger spread of light, so there may be some benefit there. Um, I don't really have a grid set up to you know, give a thorough test. But let's see, about halfway up. Getting a good, you know, 1100, and even moving it side to side, it's, it looks like closer up, it's more intense, but then dropping down to about 12 inches, um, it's about where the 15 was. Based on that, I'm going to set these at the exact same height above the plants. Hopefully I can get about, a, I don't know if it'll be 12 inches, it'll probably be maybe somewhere 8, 10 inches, but that's, um, light test and the power. I'll go ahead and show you how I'm going to set this up over my, my test grow and then we'll let that, that go. Um, I do want to mention that I forgot earlier but uh, Sansi when they gave me these lights they gave me a uh, discount code that you can get a uh, discount off if you buy these on Amazon so I'll put that in the uh, in the video description so you can use that if you're interested in buying one of these. But uh, for now, let me go ahead and get this over the plants, and we'll, we'll show, I'll show you how that's set up. Okay, so I've got a patch of holy basil in my small grow tent, and a cranky toad with a float valve controlling flow from this reservoir. And I think I'm going to pick two of these. Um, I think I think these are going to be overcrowded pretty soon as they grow in together. So I could win-win uh, with taking two out. Use for my grow light test and that'll free up a little more room in the in the tent for these guys. Okay, this is my little setup. I've got a divider. This is the 30 watt light brew container one. Both will have 
a central reservoir. This is the 15 watt, and this is the so both of these containers are connected. Um, I'm going to go to this McDonald's cup and see, I'm going to stick a air tube on the side just to aerate this. I don't really need to. This could be grown like a cracky type system, but I want to give it a little boost since I'm transferring it in case the water level is a little higher than what it was used to. Um, and also it may kind of speed things up. But So I've basically got a little self-waterer. I made uh, tape some sticks to this. It'll fit here. And that's going to keep the water level uh, about there. I may need to play with the heights on the containers. But, um, so, so then I can just fill this periodically and that'll keep a constant flow at the level that I want. Um, so it's basically like a gravity fed watering system. So we can go ahead and get the plant set up and um, get the little air tube installed and plug it up and we'll show you how that looks. Okay, so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. There's the aerated reservoir feeding the growing containers. There's that one. I'm going to fill this bottle up and turn it upside down and that'll maintain that nutrient level. So I'm going to get these plants in here. Okay, so i got to do one or two things uh, as far as the water supply goes. If I'm running the like if it's like this, it, it the system works. But if I have the aeration going, it disrupts the whatever. I guess the vacuum break for this, and it um, basically causes all the water empty out, flow out. So I can't um, use this system and the aerator. It's like either maintain a like a cracky system. It's kind of high, and I think I worry about that is these this never drops, so I don't really get the expansion of air roots that I would want. So, um, but if I take this out, I can run the bubbler, but I would have to keep an eye on how, you know, manually filling it, topping it up to a certain level, um, which I think I'm gonna just do that since this is a short run test. Um, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna remove this, uh, get the level I want, and just run the air in it, and with this just open. Uh, another concern I've got is the distance between the light and the plants. Um, it may be a little too intense, so I have to keep an eye on that. Um, that's probably close to a thousand uh, micromoles um, there. So, so I may either prune this back some more and get a shorter plant, which I may get, that may be the easiest solution because I don't really have any room to move this up any. So I think I'll prune these down a little and remove that and get the aeration going again and then we should be all set. Okay, I've got everything set up now. I've pinched off these plants, trying to get them about the same height. Reservoir, there's the other one. This one is a little bigger, it has more leaves, but I'm noting, well, showing the size now as so you can see the difference after. But um, I took the readings at these heights and they're around 24 and 500 on this one and between 5 and 600 on the um, 30 watt. And I've got a time lapse going. So I'm going to let these run. It looks like the one on the left with under the 15 watt has a big, slightly bigger plant to begin with. Uh, so make a note of that. Got them as close as I could. So all right. So um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, thank you, Sansi, for sending me these lights. And um, I'll post a follow-up video after these have run for a while and show the time lapse. And uh, look, looking forward to seeing how they how they do. Uh, anyway, thanks, thanks again, and please like, comment, and subscribe.